It's Celebrity MasterChef. We've got 16 celebs all hoping to show off their cooking talent. I'm feeling quite worried, actually. I didn't sleep very well last night. They've proved themselves in their own profession. Now let's see if they can cut it in the kitchen. I'm approaching this with a positive attitude, but not expecting a great outcome. I need to not be under pressure, which is what worries me about MasterChef. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Oi, that's my line. These four celebrities are all hoping to become the next MasterChef champion. But only the best cooks can remain in the competition. I'm not nervous. I'm not withering down into my chair. I've got a smile on my face, so I'm looking forward to it. I don't know what the challenge is today. If I get a big lump of meat that I don't know what to do with, I'll probably burst into tears. <laughs> this is so far removed from what I do. It's not really about charming my way through it. If something goes seriously wrong in the kitchen, you might see a little bit of Richard Hillman just creeping out for a moment. Four new cooks, four fresh faces, and we're about to find out where they've got what it takes. They are going to get it tough right from the get-go. Welcome to MasterChef. Really nice to see you here. Try and hold on to your nerves. Try and enjoy it. Try and imagine you're in your own kitchen. This is a mystery box. Inside that box, there's a set of ingredients. And what we'd like you to do for us is to cook for us one plate of food. That's it. So we're going to ask you to unveil your ingredients. As you can see, you all have one main ingredient, and that main ingredient is goat. The box also includes fennel, polenta, spinach, celeriac, pine nuts, rosemary and thyme, and sun-dried tomatoes. Ladies and gentlemen, one hour, one dish, surprise us. Let's cook. Never in a million years do you think you're going to have <laughs> half a goat to deal with. This is good. I'm impressed. They were getting stuck into their goat. On that saddle of goat, there's some beautiful bits of meat. There's the loin, there's the fillet. You can chop it up and make a stew. There's lots of lovely little bits and pieces on there. It's whether they can actually get the meat off the bone. Natural history presenter Miranda regularly cooks for her young family. I certainly think I'm a very basic cook. I don't do anything particularly elaborate. My husband is the chef in the family. He's a fantastic cook. I wish I could have him in my pocket, telling me what to do. How did you feel, Miranda, when you lifted the box and saw that big lump of goat? Well, I was thinking, is it lamb? Is it pork? Is it... What is it? I'm so glad you told us that it was goat, because I had no idea. I've never cooked with goat before. I used to be a vegetarian, so... And I don't really cook a lot with meat. Tell us what you're going to cook for us. I thought I might do, a, like, a bit of a stroganoff, but obviously without the mushrooms, we don't have any. Mashed celeriac, wilted spinach with some toasted pine nuts on the top. I'm just going to try it, and, you know, it could go horribly wrong and you'll absolutely hate it. That's my big challenge, is to get the flavours right. Miranda, why MasterChef? Why are you here? I've sort of lost that passion, that, that excitement about cooking. So I'm really hoping that this is going to reinvigorate that and, and, and re-energise me about my cooking. Miranda, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. She's playing with a lot of ingredients there. Goat, sun-dried tomato, pine nuts, spinach and celeriac with thyme. It's just all over the place. It's just whatever she can lay her hands on. Boy's own member Shane loves to cook for his young children. 
The unknown is what makes me a little bit edgy. But I think once I settle in, if I get the time and chance to settle in, I should be okay with things. What are you going to make for us then, Shane? At the minute, I'm trying to conjure up some kind of an idea of a curried goat. I have had curry goat in my past, all right, but I don't know how to make it, I don't know anything. This, I'm winging, winging everything right here. Where did you have curried goat? My wife is West Indian. Her brother-in-law particularly makes a fantastic curry goat. Shame, I never asked him how. <laughs> we, d we don't have a phone a friend round here, I wish you did. <laughs> Th things would be really good if that was possible, honestly. Thanks, Shane, good luck. Thank you. Shane has obviously never ever cooked a goat in his life, but his wife's from the Caribbean and he's eaten goat and he's actually got a pot of some nice smelling stuff going on there. For Shane now, it's holding his nerve and not trying to throw too many things at the dish. You are actually halfway. Comedian Shappy grew up in a food-loving family. I'm not an organised human being. People say they cook because they find it de-stresses them. I don't. Uh, mine stresses me. My brain's not ordered. And so that's the thing I, I struggle the most with. Shappy, do you have any idea what you're doing? Well, I just put water instead of oil to fry my onions because I was in a panic. So is that a yes or a no? Yes, no. I've forgotten the question. I've never been so nervous in all my life. I feel like I've never chopped anything up. Have you ever cooked a goat? No, I've never cooked... I've never eaten a goat. I've only ever fed a goat and stroked a goat and spoken softly to a goat. It's, it's quite tricky. Shappy, what are you going to cook for us? I am cooking goat's curry with... Uh, what's that? Polenta. I've always wanted to be given withering looks by you two, like I am now, so this is a dream come true for me. I told my mother I was on this programme. It took her three hours to stop laughing. <laughs> Shappy, I think you'll be fine, okay. but I want you to calm down a little All bit. All right, I'm calm. Thank you. Good luck. OK, thank you. What Shappy has done to the plenty, I don't know. She has a box with the instructions written on it. All she has to do is read them. I don't think she knows what she's doing, and I'm worried. Mm, yeah. Just 15 minutes left now. Actor Brian Capron is best known as Coronation Street serial killer Richard Hillman. I would say that I'm not very inventive. I think that's the biggest criticism I get, particularly from my wife. You do the same old thing week after week is what she would say. <laughs> Brian, by the looks of what's left on this carcass, you didn't do butchery or uh, biology at school. That's true. Uh, d d goodness. What, what, how much meat did you get off that whole saddle? Uh, as much as I could. It was like filleting a fish. Not that I've ever done that. How much cooking do you do, or have you done? Well, I cook a lot at home, um, but my cooking skills are fairly narrow. Right. Yeah, that doesn't lend itself to Master Chef at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you're going to cook for us, Brian. A lamb curry, I guess. You mean goat? Goat. <laughs> goat, I'm thinking lamb, you see. And I'll probably streak some spinach through it and do a uh, celeriac mash. Have you given any thought at all to presentation? I'm actually, uh, paradoxically, quite a neat person, so I would like to clean all this up. <laughs> it starts off neat, hopefully it'll end up neat, but in the middle of it, there is chaos. Yeah, I can see. I can see there is. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> What it's going to be? I have no idea. He has no idea what it's going to be. That scares me. The problem we've got with Brian is that he continues to throw more and more things into the pot. You should be thinking about your food going on the plate. You've got four minutes left. Four minutes.
final 60 seconds, please. You've got a couple of seconds left. Get it on the plate. Time's up. Stop. Oh, I forgot something. Your time is up. <laughs> that was horrendous. First up is Brian, who has made a sweet goat curry with celeriac mash and roasted pine nuts, buttered spinach and carrots. Actually, I believe you've got promise. There is a creamy nuttiness to your celeriac, your spinach is cooked well and seasoned, your carrots are still firm but not raw, your goat is starting to go slightly dry, but it's passable. And you've got a lovely, fruity, acidic tang in your thick, creamy sauce. I don't think they all belong together, but the way you've cooked everything is decent. Your goat's gone a bit dry, but the sauce is lovely. Your celery puree has got so much salt in it that I think I'm swimming in the Atlantic, but your spinach is nice and so are your carrots. That went all right, mate, didn't it? Amazing. Thank you. And we're still alive, which in your world's quite unusual. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. <laughs> I feel a sense of a small achievement that one got through it and that one had some positive comments. Obviously, you get a thirst for it and you think, I want these guys to say, wow, <laughs> that's good cooking. <laughs> Miranda has cooked goat stroganoff with sun-dried tomatoes celeriac mash with thyme, and steamed spinach topped with roasted pine nuts. I quite like that um, earthy nuttiness of the celeriac and the fragrance of the thyme alongside the sharp sweetness of the sun-dried tomatoes and the soft and tender flavour of your goat. But for me, the issue I've got is that your goat itself is not wet enough, and to me is more like a sandwich filling than being an actual strong enough, creamy, lovely thing. In a bap, it'd probably be a really nice thing, actually. Oh, OK. Goat in a bap. You've invented something, Miranda. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily agree with John on, on all aspects of this. The celeriac, I find, is too watery. It needs some cream in there or some milk in there. But what has impressed me is the way you've cooked your goat and the flavours you've added to it, Miranda. I think it was OK. It was better than I expected, but still really nerve-wracking. But that certainly was not how I would normally cook. <laughs> Panic, set in, shake, shake. Shane's dish is a tomato and onion goat curry served with carrots and sautéed potatoes on a bed of spinach. Shane, the meat you need to season a bit and probably fry in a little bit of butter. But saying that, that's the only thing I think is wrong with it. I actually really like the dish. I think you've got a lovely bit of spice coming through from all the onions and the, and the flavour of the broth. I love your carrots, they're soft. Good job. I'm impressed. I think you've cooked really, really well. You've got flavour all over that plate and the goat is falling off the bone. You putting hot potatoes on cold spinach is the only mistake I can see on that plate. Other than that, it tastes great and that may be the, the, the best goat I've ever tasted. Thank you. How would you feel, mate? But look, I, I'll be truthful. I didn't know what I was doing, it was just winging it, you know what I mean? I'll tell you what, if you're winging that, once you know what you're doing, I, tell you, I can't wait to eat your food. Fair enough. I, I guess I feel pretty good simply because I got some decent comments. However, I really think I just had some luck in there. Shappy has made a potato and goat curry with celeriac mash, polenta and creamed spinach served with a side salad. 
This is um, the goat, and I've never made placenta before, and I've made... Um... Shappy, just so you know, this stuff is not called placenta, it's called polenta. Sorry. OK? <laughs> just... Shall I put that on for you? What is it? Oh, I don't know. It's just some stuff. Well, <laughs> sorry. Right. OK. What's in that dressing? I don't know. I can't remember. I, I panicked. Tastes like dishwashing detergent. Well, again, useful. There are problems, Shappy. You don't need me to tell you that. Uh, the biggest one is the placenta. Right. Is, is, uh, is, is, a, is a rubber doorstop. <laughs> OK. The spinach has too much cream. What you've done with your celeriac is... You've munched up bits of it, but kept big lumps in it. But I like the way you've done your goat. It's got nice soft bits of veg. It's got nice seasoning. There's a nice thick coating around it. And you've cooked your goat pretty well. I do wish you would just calm down a little bit. I, I really do. find it very do. hard. I find it very hard to be calm. But you have a decent touch with meat. You do. The goat's not easy, and that's pretty good. I agree with Greg. Your goat is still lovely and soft. Uh, what else is on the plate is a little bit weird. Uh, <laughs> and the other thing is, Shabby, you don't have to do so much. Do a couple of things really nicely and do them really, really well, rather than doing ten things badly. I just totally panicked during that. I shouldn't have bothered with a silly salad. I've never been good at making salad sauces anyway. That wasn't bad at all, you know. Goat isn't easy. That wasn't bad. Thank you. Off you go. Thank you. Four celebrities with a goat in a box. John, they did pretty well. Shane was the most promising one here, but by his own admission, he was winging it. He might be winging it at the moment, but he might be one of those people who just has a natural gift. Brian, you know, this should help steady his nerves. I think he, he does a fair bit of cooking. Miranda cooked the goat really well, and I think she'll learn a good lesson from, from this. Shappy uh, has got a point to prove. She's trailing the others. This time, the nemesis is no longer a goat, but a tomato. This is the palate test. I'm going to cook a dish. Our celebrities are going to taste that dish. Then they're going to have to cook the dish or recreate it without a recipe. The dish is a tomato tart filled with a tomato and cumin chutney served with black olive tapenade, herb salad and a herb and garlic infused oil. The first thing I'm going to make is a tomato and cumin chutney with some shallots, garlic, and lots of overripe tomatoes, and then a good quantity of cumin. There is no other flavour in the world like cumin. I want them to get that. So chutney, of course, needs vinegar. Some fondue vinegar. Going to add the tomatoes. Increase the heat so that they, those tomatoes break down quickly. While the tomato and cumin chutney cooks down, John makes a start on the tart base. So, puff pastry. Large ring first to make our round tart. Second ring. This one you don't cut all the way through, though. No. You only score it. The outside we want to puff up. The inside we don't want to puff up because all the filling will come off. So what you've got to do with the inside is dock it. So you dock the pastry. If you dock it, it won't rise. So chutney on top. That's going to be quite heavily laden tart. Yeah. We'll put that in the middle. There we go. So far, there is nothing on that tart that they shouldn't be able to pick out. Absolutely right. So, into the oven at 220 for 15 minutes. Now the tart's in the oven, I'm going to make a herb and garlic and tarragon and basil oil. I'm going to puree it with the fresh leaves to make it green and vibrant but still flavoured. 
The flavour of that oil will be a mixture of tarragon, basil and yes, garlic. That's right. Now to make the tapenade. Capers, anchovies. Aye, aye. Love them. And then all your olives. So now, this gets blended. And then my favourite extra ingredient into a tapenade, brandy. It's a brave cook who takes a brandy bottle to a tapenade, I'll tell you that. And then fresh parsley. Mmm. So now we're almost ready to go. We have our component parts. Our oil. Look at those colours. That's the Mediterranean, isn't it? Look at it. Lovely. Then a little herb salad on top. Do you know what? I love that. Tapenade. There you go. Tomato and cumin tart with herb oil and tapenade. The two things that are going to throw them is the jam and the tapenade. Everything else, John, they should get. Well, let's get them in. This is the palate test. Because you cooked so well with that goat this morning, I've cooked you some lunch. There you have a dish, my dish, and all you need to do is to taste it and write down the ingredients that are in it. That's it. That's all you have to do. Good luck. Off you go. Lack of knowledge, I'm gonna fall down because of it. I don't know what things are called, you know? But it tastes good. <laughs> that much. Anchovies and black olives. That shouldn't go in anyone's mouth. Very tough. <laughs> because even if I can remember a taste, I can't remember what, what the name is. It tastes like apple to me. But... Two people have said apple. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Both Brian and Shane have said apple in the tart. The sweetness of the onion and the sweetness of the tomato they can taste. Amazing. I never made tapenade. I don't know what goes into it, apart from olives. Oh, that's so difficult. Only one person, and that's Miranda, has got the cumin and the tomato chutney. I'm not sure if I've got a good palate or not. I think I might be just a bit of a troffer. Now you've tasted it, we want you to cook it. Underneath the cloth, you'll find all the ingredients that went into making that dish. And some that didn't. You've got 50 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. The ingredients have been separated into four groups those to make the chutney, the tapenade, the herb oil and salad, and the puff pastry tart, though they have also been given short crust pastry to test them. With no recipe, they'll have to rely on their palate and skill alone. I just bashed into the plate with a roller. Car crash. never baked in my life. It's like getting into a Formula One car when you've never driven. And you've got to make it work. How do you do that? No idea what I'm doing. I think I'm getting away with it. None of them realise that puff pastry without anything on it will rise. None of them have worked it out. Maybe Miranda has. Everybody else is trying to build an edge. I just I don't understand how you can do this tart anyway. <laughs> Are you one of the extras in Braveheart? <laughs> what does that mean? Well, you've got like loads of white stripes across your face. 
You got the white mark? Oh, done. Chutney. Never made chutney before. No idea what I'm doing. I see some ingredients here. Just a guessing game. Just got to try and match what they made. God, you know it's not far off. <laughs> There isn't really a lot of chutney going on. There isn't enough tomato going on, which is a bit of a worry. I've never made a tart. Does it show? Brian, he's got a decent chutney going on. He's still got a stripe of white flour across his head. But what he tried to do with that puff pastry is bake it as if it was raw pastry. So what has come out the oven is a misshapen donut. I can't start again now, I don't think. It's so amazing that for these contestants, what looks like a simple dish is proving very, very tricky. Oh, there was my chopping, my tapenade. How do you work one of these, then? Just 15 minutes. There's no time to make mistakes, that's the thing. You've got to get it right the first time. I feel really under pressure right now. The tart is going to be a disaster. Well done. Yes, sir. You're a fast worker, aren't you? Ten minutes to spare. You've got just five minutes left. Guys, that's it. Time's up. Bring your plates up. Your palate test today was a tomato tart with a tomato and cumin chutney a black olive tapenade, herb salad, and herb and garlic infused oil around the outside. Shane. I think you've got a very presentable looking tart there. That's a nice round shape and it's, it's symmetrical. You finished before everybody else. Not a bad thing to work very, very fast, but your pastry needs to be cooked a little bit more. I like your tapenade. I think tapenade's delicious. You've got the sort of richness of the olives and you've got the saltiness of anchovies in the right proportion. I would have loved to see a few more herbs on top, but not a bad job, Shane. Not a bad job at all. Your chutney, it's far too sharp. However, your tapenade is bang on. And also your herb oil is lots of different herbs. Big flavour. Well done. Bit more experience, I reckon you could be very good indeed. I'm very, very happy. I'm very pleased. It was daunting, it was testing, but the end result um, was fantastic for me, so I can't complain. Miranda. I love the way that you laboured over that tapenade using a knife on a board because you didn't find the little blender. Instead, you did it all by hand. And for me, that's the star of the show. It's strong, it's bold, and I'm very, very pleased. The jam itself's not bad. Your tart needs to stay in the oven for longer. So let it cook all the way through. I like your presentation. There's a bit of elegance about it. But you need more herbs and more robust flavours. Be gutsy about how it tastes. I have to say I'm pretty happy with how it tastes. You've got the sweetness from the chutney, sweetness of the tomatoes, and of course that bold, salty tang of the tapenade. However, that's spoiled somewhat by the fact that your pastry's not cooked. And your oil has got no herbs in it at all. I'm exhausted. I'm emotionally drained. 
I've never concentrated on something in such detail for so long. It's just really hard. Brian? Whoa! That tapenade is so sharp, so sharp. It's got far too many capers in it. But I really like the sweetness that you have inside your chutney with those smiles. I like that. Brian, I, I've got to say, you, you've got something served, which is a miracle, really. Um, I like your herb oil. Your pastry's not quite cooked enough. And then we've got this salty, hefty, whack you in the mouth, kick you in the shins, and when you're down, break a rib for you, a tapenade. I mean, it's, it is really strong. Sorry, Brian, but today you learn a lesson. I knew it was wrong. I knew the whole thing was wrong, but in my head, I was pleased that it looked like something. I definitely need to up my game. The proportions are wrong. You don't have anywhere near enough tomato, and you've got far too much tapenade. It's not like John's. And there are things that are wrong, like the pastry's wrong and the chutney's not really there. However, you've got some nice flavours in, like your oil, like your tomatoes, like your tapenade. The inside of that tart is not cooked. That's raw pastry, you can see it. But because your tapenade is so strong, it goes quite nicely with your tomatoes. It really tore into me. I'll tell you something though, I don't like tarts. Thank you very much indeed, and we'll see you soon. Off you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's been an interesting day, I think, from Mystery Box which was a goat, to a humble tomato tart. What I've learned about these four today is they can all cook meat well, they can all identify ingredients, but some have obviously got more experience in the kitchen than others. Shane, I think, may have, and I say may have, the makings of a natural cook. Straight out of the starting gate, I hadn't a clue what I was doing. Taste-wise, I was on a wing and a prayer, an absolute wing and a prayer. In my opinion, we've got Miranda, who's obviously done a bit of cooking, and is now batting with her nerves. I think we've got bigger things to come, which is the scary bit. Brian is a little up and down. Good goat, mistake-ridden tart. It's, it's like jumping into a pool and having to keep swimming till it gets to the other end. It's, it's quite terrifying. Shappy has got a lot to prove for me. Oh, yeah. Silly mistakes. I mean, silly mistakes. If John and Greg think I'm the dunce of the class, I'm really up for proving them wrong. I want to be a lot better than I was today. They've got through today. What happens to them next? Well, it's the big wide world. After surviving the MasterChef kitchen, the four celebrities are now being sent into the fearsome world of mass catering. Absolutely terrified. We have no idea what we're letting ourselves in for. Welcome to Goldsmiths College recognised as one of the leading creative universities in the UK. You are preparing and serving lunch for over 100 of the students here today. Today you're working in teams. First team, Brian and Shappy. Second team, Miranda and Shane. Each team needs to prepare a large quantity of food. 40 meat dishes, 30 vegetarian dishes, and 30 desserts. You have two hours.
good luck. Off you go. Goldsmiths College is part of the University of London and is renowned for its fashion, arts and music degrees. Previous alumni include Mary Quant, Damien Hurst and Blur, who formed at the college in the 80s. Today, the celebrities will be under the guidance of Goldsmiths head chef, Mehmet Akar. Good morning, guys. Good morning. We're going to serve one o'clock. I want everything is out five to one, ready to serve, please. OK. OK, good luck, everyone. Thank you. The teams must each create two main dishes, one meat and one vegetarian, and a dessert. They can choose from ingredients including pork, beef, spinach, tomatoes, chickpeas, couscous, and a range of fruit, veg, spices, and larder ingredients. There's so much stuff here, it's like... Yeah. I don't know. This is a massive challenge. There's a funny feeling in my stomach right now, when it's not hunger, I'm really nervous. Oh, cheesecake, digestive biscuits. That's what we can do. That's really easy to do. I do have Miranda on a, as a teammate. So we could do stuff red, green and yellow peppers. If we can rely on each other and not work against each other, that's that would be a great thing. Let's swap over, have a look. Usually I cook for batches of six people. Six is how many I can handle. Cooking for a hundred is very daunting. Oh, there's nice squash there. I don't know anything about that. I'm right off. Working with Shappy will be interesting. Oh, we can make a crumble. I'm sure we'll have a laugh. Cauliflower cheese would be good. No, 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 no. Famous last words. <laughs> Just tell me what's the idea for the menu. OK, we were thinking for our, our meat dish, we'll make like a, a Middle Eastern style beef stew. We're going to make a veggie curry. Okay, and for our pudding, good. we were thinking a really nice fruit salad. But with... I don't think so because, finger wise, cold weather can make, a, you guys can make a crumble. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. make a crumble. It's not rocket science, right? No. It's right. very easy and simple. Time is kicking up now. OK. Right. Can we? Just discuss stuff with you, just to sort of brainstorm a bit. Vegetarian option, we thought of doing stuffed peppers, with red, green and yellow peppers. Meat, we thought about doing maybe a pork stroganoff. Right. Pudding, uh, saw the digestive biscuits over there and the ricotta cheese, so we thought about doing like a, like a lime cheesecake. Sounds good. What, shall I start chopping all the veg? Uh, for the, yeah, for the you curry? Some onion? For you, for, yeah. yeah. The celebrities now have just two hours before the lunch service. Oh, I don't like fat in my meat at all. I hate fat in my meat. Our celebs may well have done a Christmas lunch. They may have even catered for a party, but they have never had to cook for over 100 people before. Guarantee it. While Shappy starts to fry off the beef for the stew, Whee! Brian gets on with the prep for the vegetable curry. Timings are one of the biggest concerns when you're doing a vegetarian curry, I think, to get so that the vegetables stay nice and crunchy. <laughs> That'd probably be raw. <laughs> there we go. With Shappy and Brian well underway, Shane and Miranda are still discussing how to cook their dishes. Um, what else do we need for stroganoff? Just got to go in and 40, start in 40 minutes. The procrastination going on between Shane and Miranda is really frustrating me. Well, I think that the onions should go on soon. The amount of time they're talking, they can actually be talking and cooking at the same time. You can do two things. You can talk and cook. And what flavouring should we do with that? Should we put paprika in it? Cook, guys! Cook something! Shane starts prepping the pork for the stroganoff. Stuff like that has yeah. got to come out. But can you get it, maybe get it on the board and... Um, Get a smaller knife, maybe. While Miranda finally gets on with making the biscuit base for the lime cheesecake. I'm under Miranda. She's the head chef without a shadow of the doubt. I'm a, her onion peeler right now, and I'm happy with that. That's good. We need some direction. Miranda, you are definitely in charge, aren't you? Are you always this tough? Are you the leader? No. Well, I'll tell you what, when I look at the pair of you, now, Shane's a big lad, but I would rather tackle Shane than you. He's so good. I'd rather good. tackle myself than her. 
<laughs> so what's happening is that I am um, fast cooking the meat and then I'm going to add chickpeas, maybe some tinned tomatoes and hope. Shabby, who's boss in your team? Oh, boss, um, it, we are totally um, democratic. Working together as a team in that he's doing his thing, I'm doing my thing. That's not really a team, then, is it? What would make it special? What would make this special is yeah. if the spices had enough salt and pepper and spices in it to make it taste nice. Good. Oh, wow. Hello, ladies. What I am really pleased with is our happy Shappy looks. Woohoo! That's fun. This is the first time I've seen her calm and enjoying herself since she walked into this composition. 45 minutes have gone. Brian's been left in charge of a vegetable curry. Mm. This is only the second time in his life he's made a curry. Brian's mess is pointing towards a messy lunch. Chopping away, just hope I've got enough there, and I think there's more or less enough there. I don't know if there's enough for 30 people. It's so difficult to know, really. Listen, listen. John has already commented on your mess. <laughs> Stop right now, right now, and do not work in this rubbish anymore. There's no need for it. And to tell you what, you will work more efficiently and quicker if you work clean. Put yes. that in there, empty that in the bin, then come back again, all yeah. right? Yes. If you work in this state, You'll never, ever succeed. True. Thank you. Miranda has finished the base for her cheesecake, while Shane is still on the stroganoff prep. Miranda and Shane, they haven't made much of a proper star on what's supposed to be the stuffed pepper vegetarian. And if they don't sort themselves out, the students ain't gonna get any food in that part of the kitchen, and I am serious. It's very easy to just panic and do everything in a very sort of slapdash way. So I'm trying just to take a bit of time. Oh, whoa, 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 listen, guys. You have one hour, just over one hour before lunch, and there are some hungry-looking students down there. All right? Many of them look like they haven't eaten in a week. <laughs> There's no university in the world quite like Goldsmiths. Creativity is what we do. It's here in a hundred different forms. Students are very demanding and very discerning. They care about how food is sourced, how it looks, and how it tastes. And they want it when they arrive. Come on, guys, don't let me down, please. Oh no, oh no, it's gone a bit lumpy. No lump of flour. What have you done? I had to put the flour in. It's a disaster. Yeah, I know, look what's happened. You've got to mix flour with water to make it taste thicker. You I, know. I know, but you I. You didn't know, did you? Otherwise, you would have done it. I panicked and I just put it straight in because of time. I thought we were right. You know, lump of big flour. No, I'll sort it out. Were you? Yeah. Okay. I'll sort it out. Good luck. Not that I know how to fix it. I'll just do that for a bit. Chappie knew she had to thicken the stew. So what she's done, put herself a big container full of flour and just poured it in. And we've now got these flour dumpling lumpy things floating around with the chickpeas. It's going to be weird. It's going to be really nasty. I'm really upset about my dumb decision to just whack flour in like a flour monster. There we are. Look, you'd never know. While Chappie tries to rescue her stew, Teammate Brian gets the vegetable curry on and makes a start on stewing the fruit for the crumble. Maybe there's too much cinnamon in there. Call me old-fashioned. Shane has finally started cooking the stroganoff. Just uh, sweating up the pork at the moment. 
We've got 35 minutes to go. It should take about another 20 minutes anyway. I've spent too much time on this cheesecake. I can categorically tell you that. I had no idea that it would take so long. Anybody know where the fridge is? Right now, we've got a cheesecake in the freezer, which, thank goodness, there is. Nobody knock that off, please. 30 minutes to go. The pork stroganoff only just being started, and the stuffed peppers are bare of any stuffing. We're going to have stuffless peppers. The peppers are in the oven, um, and if they have 10 minutes, and we'll be a bit late, but it's OK, I think. With all their other dishes cooking, Brian and Shappy team up to make the custard. One ounce, the whole bag, yeah. needs 70 litres of milk or three pints of milk. You can see Shappy over there right now reading the instructions on how to make custard for a bag of custard powder. Shall I make the custard in that? Uh, no. no, no. Use yeah. a pot, please. A pot. pot. Yes. Yeah. Come on, Shappy, you must have made custard in your life. I think maybe more milk. <gasps> Is that cream? <gasps> cream. Is it cream? Yeah, it's cream. Well, let's put some milk in. Cream, that won't matter. We put some of this in, yeah? yeah. Put some milk in. What the hell is this? Look, because it looks like milk, it should be marked clearer. How much custard powder did you put in here? A whole lot. This is enough for 200 people. I, I, I didn't... Oh, my gosh. Guys, just move it, please. so frightened, as chef, that he's actually brought in the reserves to help out. Never before has this man looked so stressed in his whole life. That pudding is now close onto a disaster. How do you mess up packet custard? How? With only 15 minutes to go, Miranda is struggling to get the couscous stuffing ready for the peppers. It's rubbish. It's really it's rubbish. I wouldn't want to eat this. This is what happens when I make couscous at home. It's uh, horrendous. It soil. just looks like semolina and it's got no flavour to it. If Miranda and Shane get that vegetarian course up, it's going to be close on a miracle. And it still tastes of absolutely nothing. And I just don't know how to rectify it. Shall we start the shop now, please? With moments to spare, Miranda and Shane still need to stuff all of their peppers. It's always about timing with something as big as this. We know that. But this time, it's getting a little bit hairy. Shane and Miranda are well behind time. This is just rubbish. That's back, Regan Work. Come on, guys, come on, please, push it now, please. Nearly there, Chef. People is waiting for downstairs. It's tasting quite nice. It's all over now, anyway, regardless. Yeah, we're ready. It's really nice. I'm quite happy, but just we're late. Yeah. Just go down, please. Just go down. Serve the food. People are already waiting. We're already late for 10 minutes. Please, go. All Thank right. you, Shane. No problem. 10 minutes late. Lunch is finally served. Miranda and Shane have made a pork and mushroom stroganoff with rice and roasted peppers stuffed with couscous and sweet potato. Shappy and Brian have made a Mediterranean beef stew and a vegetable curry, both served with rice. Ah, here we go. Hi there. Sorry, we're late. Hello. It's the vegetarian option. Um, we have oh, a veggie curry, curry here. Yeah. And stuffed red peppers, or stuffed red, green and yellow peppers here. Stuffed with roasted squash and vegetables. Yeah, sure. Anyone else now? Me? Yeah, 
You're having beef? There we go. Shappy's beef stew and Brian's vegetable curry are both being snapped up. I picked the um, Mediterranean beef. I would assume that this is cooked by amateur chefs more than professional ones. To be honest, I didn't love it. <laughs> My fourth beef was good. It didn't lack too much flavour, but I found that the sauce was quite watery and it didn't create quite a nice texture in my mouth. What I like are those chickpeas. Those chickpeas have soaked up lots of the flavour. It's all right, but I prefer just to have the chickpeas, thanks very much, and not the beef. Vegetable curry. curry. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I chose the vegetarian curry because I'm not a big meat eater. It's good. Lots of flavor. A little bit of spice, which is nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. Ooh, that, that's well flavored. That sweet got an almost citrus tang, and it's got real heat and spiciness. I love your surprise. Yeah, 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 I'm surprised, you know, with, with Brian, because he works in such a messy way, but actually the man's really got some flavour in there. Oh, I agree with you, it's nice. It's good. Go, Brian. The pork and spinach stroganoff over here. Uh, pork and spinach. Uh, OK. On the other team, Shane's pork stroganoff is also selling well. So far, so good. It's moving. But not Miranda's stuffed peppers. Hey, vegetarians want a stuffed pepper, stuffed with couscous and roasted butternut squash. I'm not proud of them. They don't look beautiful. There we go. It was a bad Thank decision. You, Hello, pork, yeah? Thank you. I've chosen the pork with the spinach, um, and I had to tonight because the sauce was looking delicious, so I decided to try. I think it's really tasty, so yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> the sauce is splendid, the rice is fine, the pork is um, maybe just need a little longer cooking, just a bit chewy. It's good, it's well seasoned, it's nicely cooked. Um, I reckon I could have done with a bit more on a plate, but not a bad job. I love the colour of it and I really like the flavour. It's deep and it's rich and it's peppery. I like it. It's the sort of wet stuff that I really like. Oh. I chose the stuffed peppers and the couscous. To be honest, it's a little bit bland. I think the word stuffed is probably... Yes. Wow. That's interesting, isn't it? It's a pepper cup with a blob of overcooked couscous with some vegetables running through it. It does taste of herbs and it does taste of onion and you get the sweetness from the squash. However, it's a very small portion and that is a lump of couscous. And couscous should not come in lumps. No. With the mains gone, it's now time for dessert. Ta -da. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your patience. Dessert, it's on its way. Okay. The team's puddings are a lime cheesecake from Miranda and Shane and an apple, pear and apricot crumble with custard from Shappy and Brian. Apple and pear crumble and custard over here. Thank you very much. Like this cheesecake. Thank you. Here we are. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Cheesecake is rolling out. We're in fast at last. I'm thinking it's a bit icy, it's a bit cold. Uh, icy cheesecake, what am I doing? Yep, there we go, done. Last couple of pieces of cheesecake. Yeah. Is it all gone? It's all gone. That's not too bad now. Oh, it's kind of defrost. Oh! Uh... The actual cheesecake filling is really hard. It's like it's been frozen or left in the freezer. I was actually quite disappointed with it because <laughs> um, it's really, really cold. It doesn't taste of much, but the base is really good and the strawberries are really good. I loved it. It was like a cheesecake ice cream, like not a plain cheesecake. More like a cheesecake ice cream, but I like the 
difference to it. Oh, oh, whoa. Now, that is a semi-fredo on a biscuit base. Wow. Oh, that's a mess up. Ricotta doesn't have any flavour. The cream's not been sweetened. There's no vanilla running through it. It's all a bit plain and bland, isn't it? And that is the last one. Well done, my friend. Oh, Good work. Bless you, bless you. I went for the crumble. It was nice, yeah. I didn't know what the fruit was in it. It was uh, a bit of a mystery, but it was nice, yeah. I, I wish there was a bit more crumble in it, because I think that would have balanced the flavour a bit more. I don't, it's supposed to be pear and apple, but I've only just tasted huge chunks of pear. Oh, I think that's a mistake. Sorry. You've got dried apricots in here, all right, and they haven't been chopped. I mean, look at that. I mean, you do not want to chew a whole dried apricot. That's laziness. I've got to say, this is close to atrocious. This is custard, which comes out of a packet. The apples inside the crumble aren't cooked properly. It's rich with cinnamon, which is great, and it has some nice flavours from the apricots, but there's been no care in this at all. Well, that's a write-off. Well done, guys. Well done. The pressure is going to be on cooking this quantity of food in an environment you've never been in before is daunting. I think they've done OK. I have to say, though, I think the boys in the team have edged it today. I think you're right. I think the boys have got it. It was fun. It keeps you busy, it keeps your mind ticking, you're focusing on so many different things at once. I really liked I enjoyed it. I think I saw all the plates were clean at the end. There's a certain satisfaction in that. It would have been horrible if they'd have all gone. <laughs> I was really fired up with adrenaline and I'm now feeling really deflated. All my energy's gone. I'd love to have had a bit more planning time. When we first started the MasterChef competition, I said, oh, you know, I'll just have fun. But now I'm like 100% in the game. Nobody's going home at this stage of the competition. They've got a chance to continue to learn because next it's going to be properly tough. Next time, the pressure continues as the four celebrities battle to stay in the competition. I think mine are done. Oh, heavens above. Oh, that's hot, isn't it? Sorry, thank you. Oh, hello. The keys don't know what you're doing. Give me a week in here and it might be all right. Give me an hour in here, you're having a clue. I don't know which one's which at all. No idea. Just keep stirring the sauce. You've got 15 portions on order, like 15. <laughs> it's a nine. <laughs> he's just spinning on the spot now, he's totally lost. 